hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides? Hey, miss, is the shortest distance between two points a straight line like this? Oh! And is it true that if you spin in a circle before launching a missile, you increase its velocity? Coming back, one hour less maths. Yeah! yeah. <gasps> you little Miss Beetle, you have a choice. Get down at once or I'll make you recite Pythagoras backwards 50 times. My name is Miss Chicago. I'm your new maths teacher and I want to be able to hear a fly go by. Good. You two there, yeah. recite the seven times table while performing head over heels. And hurry up about it, or you will copy out your maths textbook for tomorrow. One, One seven is seven, two sevens are fourteen, three sevens are twenty-one, four sevens are twenty-eight, five sevens are twenty-eight, five sevens are twenty-eight. I don't like maths anymore. I'm not going to classes. Miss Smith walked out because of the chaos, and her replacement is really weird. She made Rani and Alex do head over heels, and Jessica redo an exercise Ooh. standing on one leg. My little mongoose never forget the detective's rule number one. Don't be fooled by appearances. She may be weird, but she's still a good teacher. Clients at the SBI. Well, at least something's normal. Well, Chicago doesn't know us. We didn't do anything to her. In punishments come raining down. The SBI has to find out why she's got us in her sights. After class, she made us count up to a thousand to the tune of Jingle Bells. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, all right, 11. I get it. It's awful. As a punishment, I'm not too keen on investigating a teacher. But she thinks Chicago's so weird she doesn't want to go back to maths class. How did you hear that? Are you hiding under the kitchen table or something? <laughs> My new invention, the Sonic Dewey. It picks up sonic waves remotely. I don't know how I come up with this stuff. You were spying on me. It's great, right? So, you're going to take the case or not? We can do more than that. We're going to see the principal. The head of the school should be aware of what his teachers are up to. No, no, and no again. Miss Chicago will remain here. Since when did students choose their teachers? Agreed. But can you explain where Miss Smith has gone and why her replacement turned up so quickly? That's none of your business. Now clear out of my office. So what's plan B? We sort it out ourselves? Exactly. Who'd call themselves after a town? The only stuff about Chicago is United States and Al Capone. And it seems she doesn't live anywhere. There's no Miss Chicago in the phone book. A maths teacher. She must be on some graduate website. Chicago, Chicarding. No Chicago. So she's not a maths teacher? So basically, we know nothing. So what's plan C? Well, pass me your trusty Tronic Dewey. Sonic Dewey? So what are you up to? Like you? Spine. Well, I'll go and see Miss Smith and tell her she has to come back because her replacement is a nutcase with no qualifications. That's all. If it doesn't work, it's because you pressed off. I'm at Miss Smith's house. Good luck. <laughs> Calm has settled once more. Students are attending classes, and here is my present. Thank you. Miss Smith was beginning to lose it. Right, I must be going. I should tell you, Sally and Dewey asked me some questions about you. Be careful. If they ferret around too much, you can just say you'll expel them. <laughs> <laughs> Plan D. We're going to get expelled if we go on with the investigation. We have to stop. It's far too dangerous. No, we're not going to be intimidated, especially as this smells really fishy. The principal is giving Chicago presents. That's why he's covering for her. They're friends. So do we keep going? Absolutely.
But I didn't say anything. Sally, I've been knocking on Miss Smith's door for half an hour. I've had enough. I'm leaving. No, don't move. Because of your phone call, Dewey, Miss Chicago almost caught me. I'm risking a lot for this inquiry, so you can at least stay put. Something zebra. Dewey, get out of there! What? But five seconds ago, you were telling me to stay. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? I just can't wait to hear your explanation for being here. Certainly an unusual place to be playing. Uh, we came to see Miss Smith. We weren't doing anything wrong, so no punishment, please. Punish you for coming to see Constance? Oh, what a thought. I don't believe she's at home. Oh, have you had tea? I have some lovely mm -hmm. octopus jam, if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Why didn't Miss Chicago punish us? Because there's no reason. You are too adorable, my little mongoose. Yes, but you know me. Chicago doesn't. She finds us spying, and instead of getting mad, she offers us octopus jam. Maybe that's a punishment in disguise. Sally, I know you don't like maths, but for a successful investigation, nothing beats logic. Miss Chicago is living at Miss Smith's house? Yes, so therefore they know each other. And who does she punish in your class? Of course! Miss Chicago punishes Ronnie and Alex, the boys who created mayhem in Miss Smith's class. Dewey, we have to question all the students who have been punished by Miss Chicago and find out if they play pranks on Miss Smith. <laughs> to make everybody laugh. Miss Chicago made me correct all my assignments two-handed. With Miss yeah. Smith, I played the explorer. I, I crawled under the tables. Chicago made me recite all of Pythagoras while balancing dictionaries on my head. Well, I used to have this super wheeze. I used to stand up really, really slow. <laughs> Miss Chicago made me draw 250 isosceles triangles. Even if I don't like it, I can concentrate. I can understand the lesson. Everybody's doing better at maths. OK, to sum up, we have a teacher, apparently with no qualifications, but who gets great results with the students. Who is friends with the principal and our old teacher. This is a big mystery or a big secret. Know where a woman keeps her secrets? I don't know, but I'd really like to. In her handbag. There, a little quadratic equation. That'll keep him quiet. Oh, miss, I know the class is about to start, but I've got a terrible stomachache. Could you take me to the infirmary? OK, no time to lose. My bag! McAdam, wait for me here. Chicago got Miss Smith's passport. <laughs> Miss Smith can't have gone around the world without a passport. Chicago must have stolen it. We have to go back to Miss Smith's house. Number one, we don't know if Chicago robbed Smith. Number two, if Chicago catches us, we'll be expelled. And number three, I've messed up a life with the school nurse. I've never seen a stomach in such good condition. It looks more like a case of mathophobia, Master McAdam. Number four, Sally Bollywood never abandons a case. Number five, if you're scared, I'll go by myself. We have to put the passport back in Miss Chicago's bag. <gasps> She's a prisoner. Why isn't the principal doing anything? Number six, Dewey never abandoned Sally. Number seven, I've got my DNA detected to find out who Chicago is. And I can't think of a number eight. Miss Smith, there's a prisoner in there. We have to rescue her now. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you have entered these premises uninvited. What should we do for punishment? You're not a real teacher. You have no maths qualifications. So then how do you explain why all the students have improved since I arrived? Because you use Miss Smith's class notes. But we know that she's a prisoner here. Why would I want to keep Constance as a prisoner? I don't know, but we're going to find out who you are. We have a DNA detector, and with your hair, we're going to expose you. One thousand billion putrid protons! Miss Chicago has the same DNA as oil! There are no human genes in this hair. Don't worry, Dewey. She can't be an alien. It's just her hair that isn't human. 
I should have known it was sleuths like you. I'd have my work cut out. Miss Smith? Smith? I've been preparing my disguise for a long time now. Are you sure about your plan, Miss Smith? It's the only solution. My students create chaos in my class, all because I'm nice to them. At the next disturbance, I'm turning into a nutty professor, and then they'll really learn what respect means. And that's how Miss Chicago came into being. Maybe it's time for her to leave now. And I think the students have all learned their lesson. <laughs> Miss Chicago has left on a trip, but I too want to hear a fly go by. Shirk work. Okay, let's sum up. One, it happens during the night. Two, all the clothing that was customized was old stuff, either dumped, lost, or like the lab coats, in very, very bad condition. And this bear logo has been stitched onto all the repaired clothing. So it looks like it's the trademark of the Midnight Mender. A bit like an artist signing his work. That's it. So we should start looking into which students are doing art and design classes. Cool idea. Let's go see Sam. She's always saying that we all dress like nerds. No, I don't know anything about it. But I'd really like to meet your midnight mender. At last there's someone creative in this school. Now clear off, I'm creative. Well, anyway, if you hear anything, Come you can... on, get out. You're ruining my inspiration. Oh, what a poser. But I believe her. She seems to be telling the truth about not knowing anything. That doesn't mean a thing. Should we keep her under surveillance anyway to see if she collects any of the old clothing? Who's the tall girl with Sam? There, I've got all the info on her. Maria, 1 meter 57, 39 kilos. She's two years ahead of us, specializing in art and design. It's lunchtime. We can't lose Sam for a moment. This is a good time to collect lost clothing. Okay, see ya. Sam is leaving. Oh, rats! She can't have classes this afternoon. We're not going to catch her red-handed today. Yes, but Maria is staying here. <gasps> Come on, let's grill her. Hi, Maria. I just wanted to ask you where you and your friend Sam get all your cool clothes from. I Make them. I'm going to be a designer later on. And you wouldn't have heard anything about someone doing up students' garments without asking their permission? Yes, of course Sam mentioned it to me. But if you're insinuating that it's me, sorry, but I'm only interested in my own clothes, not other people's. Mm. That one seems a likely suspect. <laughs> Two more 
lab coats would be mended. Then there would be a single standard one left. I'm not complaining. I've been asking for new lab coats for ages. Thanks to the mystery mender, they're clean and sturdy once again. And they're pretty. It's the same signature again. We have to find out who's interested in bears in the school. Let's go and check in the library. You're on. I'll meet you there. I've got a personal errand to run first. Hello, Miss. Can you tell us if anyone's taken out any books on bears lately? All right. Let's see. Yes, one student took out a book on bears and another one a dictionary of animals. And may we know who they were, please? But of course not. Privacy regulations. We have to get a look at those names on her computer. I've got a great idea. You remember my favourite film, Bad Boys from the Bronx? I'm going to play the scene between little Louie and Scarface Joey. That should get her away from her desk. You're gonna do this work for me, Elsa's gonna take care of you. Are you talking to me, you dirty roach? Mr. Shoebridge! Sorry, I forgot the scene ended like that. Huh? I put the names. They were Albert and Maria. Her again. You see, it's not Albert, considering the state he got into when his lab coat was customized. But Maria's name keeps coming up again and again. Hi there, Maria. <gasps> Why did you borrow a book on animals? What do you mean? Are you feeling okay? Can I see what's in your sketch pad, please? Well, that's what I call a preview. Maria, it's you mending the clothes, isn't it? No! I only customised my own clothes and my friends! So why did you run away just now? I... I panicked! I thought that if you saw my sketches, you would automatically think that I was guilty! That's true. You have no eye! Just by looking at my designs, you can see that I don't have the same style as your mystery mender. Since you're such an expert, maybe you can explain it all to us. Your mystery mender uses more plastic shapes, very free in the choice of tone and materials, and there's a preference for bright colours. The favourite colour is orange. It's everywhere. Well, the work is very talented, but as you can see, it's very different from mine. Yes, this is very convincing. Thanks to you, we now have a solid lead on the mender. We know her favourite colour is orange. What about the bear logo? Do you have any pointers? Well, a logo is the image that represents the designer. It's often a very personal thing. OK. So we end the day with two good clues. But I'm afraid we don't have any leads anymore. Sally, look! I've just got back an old sweater that I'd lost. It's all decorated. And where did you find it? The caretaker just brought it to me. He's in charge of all the lost properties. This material reminds me of something. But what? And do you see? There's no orange at all. That's weird. You'd think the mender overheard our conversation with Maria. That's interesting. Yesterday in the canteen, there were Albert, Bob, Alma, and us two. You forgot Carlotta. Carlotta? Forget it. She must have better things to do than patching up old moth-eaten clothes. We've already eliminated Albert and Bob. Sewing's not his thing. And it can't be Elmer either. She mm. asked us to investigate. Let's go and see the caretaker. He's the one who looks after lost property. Maybe he's seen something. Yes, when a teacher or a staff member finds an object or some clothing, they put it in the lost property locker. If there's a name tag on it, I hand it back. Otherwise, it stays in the locker. Thank you. A piece of material on Betty's sweater. This is where I saw it, Dewey. It's the same as the caretaker's old curtains. What did you do with your old curtains? My old curtains? Oh, yes. I gave them to the cleaners to make dusters with. Thanks! Yes, that's right. We used his old curtains to make dusters, and as I remember, we gave a few pieces to Teddy to wipe down the canteen <gasps> tables. Why do you call Carlotta Teddy? Well, her family name is Bear, so we call her Teddy. <laughs> Get it? Yesterday, when Maria was explaining things, Carlotta seemed very interested. And, by coincidence, the customised sweater this morning didn't have any orange patches. You keep Carlotta busy while I snoop around her storeroom. Carlotta, could I have a slice of apple pie, please? <sighs> Is that all you want, Dewey? I have to go to the storeroom. <clears throat> I'd like another slice. Can I have an orange juice, Carlotta? Sure, dearie. I haven't got any more here. I'll go and get some from the storeroom. No! 
Carter, I want another slice of pie, please. You should eat breakfast, my boy. Will that be enough, or do you want a fourth slice? No, thanks, Carlotta. That'll do. Otherwise, he'll explode. I've got some great information. Carlotta's closet is full of orange accessories. It's obviously her favorite color. Great. The trail is getting closer to her. But that's not proof. We have to catch her red-handed. Dewey, get undercover. What are you doing? No, nothing, nothing. Just checking something. Shh! I hear footsteps. She's taken my blazer. Do you want to wait till tomorrow to arrest her? Give her time to customize it. Rats, she put it back. <laughs> right, let's grab her. FBI, ah. don't move. Oh. Midnight Mender. It's true. It's me. But design is my passion. I want to make it my new career and create my own label. But why mend students' clothing? For practice. I used up all my own worn-out clothes. So I borrowed worn, torn, and old lab coats that should have been replaced. That's all. I'll take back all those clothes and make them like they were before. No, don't. You improve them. Most people prefer your changes. But why keep it secret? Well, I never had a chance to go to dressmaking or fashion school. I just run a canteen and thought people would make fun of me. When you've got talent, nobody makes fun of you. I have a favor to ask. I'd like you to take care of my blazer, even if you don't usually do up new clothes. <laughs> take a passion for fashion and itching for stitching. Add a sense of style and mix it with a smile. If you've got creative flair, then show the world it's there. Shout it to the sky and you'll be flying high. Welcome, everyone. We're now going to present to you the awesome winter collection for the fantastic new designer, Carlotta Detectives. I want them to investigate if this really is my rabbit. Well, since mm. Jaya looked after him, Shai's become the exact opposite of himself. A real nervous wreck. Doesn't even like carrots anymore. Yet he really looks like him. Hmm. It sure does look like the same rabbit. The picture isn't enough. We must analyze the DNA. By comparing the DNA of the hair of this rabbit huh? with the hair of the old rabbit, the case will be closed in five minutes. Achoo! Achoo! This can't be possible. Am I allergic to the rabbit fur? Achoo! He's broken the DNA tester, and chew, he's having a wee. Oh. Shy, come here. Be nice. Behave. Shy. The, the fancy dress party's next door. Huh? FBI, we have a few questions to ask you concerning the Shy case. Oh, come on. Shy isn't hiding under my desk. I gave him back to Martin. This is ridiculous. That's not what Martin thinks. I can't him because my mother won't let me have an animal. I was only allowed to keep Martin's rabbit for one week. That's all. Crikey, she's created a real rabbit land here. I heard that, Miss Detective. And yes, I adore rabbits. I was happy to have a real one. And so what? Okay, how do you explain such a changing character in Shy? It's normal. I made the rabbit a nest, a, a home in my bedroom, but took him out to the garden a lot, whereas Martin keeps Shy indoors. So I guess that the freedom of the great outdoors has made Shy wilder. Jaya, mm. the washing up is looking sad. It's waiting for you. Ooh. Oh, 
Right, no traces of Shy here. Okay, it would be more practical if we had a hair detector. Oh, but I've got one here. A luxurious supermodel with a sneezing alarm. Ha <laughs> ha, that's really funny. Do you like carrots? Because I think I found my wish. Turn Sunny Bollywood into a rabbit. It's really weird. No traces of the rabbit in the garden. So we can be sure that Jaya never took him out. But why is she lying? Hmm. If we don't find Shy here, he might have got lost or run away. Jaya would have replaced him because she couldn't tell Martin the truth. Jaya, you've earned yourself some more questions. But I've told you everything! Oh, come on, Jaya. Losing a rabbit can happen. They can run pretty fast. Hmm? Hmm? Shh. There's an animal wandering around down there. He's gone towards the room next door. Come on, right. Jimmy, get down from there. It's not going to eat you. First of all, you don't know anything. Rodents do nibble. Jimmy, the rabbit couldn't have run away because the attic is totally closed. But we know the Jaya has lied to us. We should go and question the neighbors. They'll probably notice something. Now that I think of it, it's true that something weird happened. It was in the evening. I was coming back from my judo lessons and I saw Jaya running with a rabbit. She didn't even say hello. I thought that was a bit weird. They went into the house to the end of the street. And that was it. And, and what, what happened? happened? Well, I've never seen that little rabbit again. Huh? Thanks again. Siegfried Roy. Magician and trainer. Specialist in animals. Do you think Jaya could have sold Shy to him? He's probably left for Las Vegas with it. They've got a show in a casino. We'll never see them again. <laughs> Calm your imagination down. Look! A vet. Oh, okay then. There's no doubt that's the right lead. Here's a young girl with a white rabbit. He had slight carrot indigestion. Nothing serious. It was a very well-behaved rabbit. The problem is now he isn't well-behaved at all. Would you have any idea of what could cause such a change in his character? Well, I can only see three reasons for a rabbit to change so radically. Oops. Wait a second. Dewey, you wouldn't have... Oh, here, you can keep this. The pet shop gave me loads of these. So, three possible reasons for such a change. One, modification of environment. Two, stress. And three, becoming a teenager. Achoo! Oh, you're allergic to rabbits. Well, you should pinch your nose. It does actually work. Great, Sally. Brilliant idea. Bring Shy in for observation when I'm allergic to rabbits. Sorry, but Martin is letting him stay with us. And it's the only way to test the vet's hypothesis. And to be honest, the pig really suits you. Here you are in a new environment. Let's see if you change character, and if Shy the Terror becomes Shy the Calm again. Aha! There we go. Simple. You were just upset because of the move. <laughs> oh no, Shy! Not my sorries! Shy! Shy, come back here immediately! Ooh. Okay, alright, I get the message. You didn't do it on purpose, is that right? Uh. We're going to find out if you're naughty when you're stressed. Sorry for the rabbit nightmare. No anxieties. Great. We'll try something else. Okay, last thing to check out. If you've become a mischievous teenager, you're going to love this. Careful, this is going to be great. Funny rabbits got some funny habits. But why, oh why, don't you act like shy? You're no teenager then. You're still a baby rabbit. However, I am sure of one thing. You are not Shy the Rabbit. Sully! Sully! We were last know the truth! The DNA equipment is repaired! Congratulations, genius. But it's pointless. I already know the rabbit's not shy. Well, it's still worth having scientific evidence, isn't it? That was Shy's cushion before he went to Jaya's. The new Shy, I call him Smoocher now, has never wanted to sleep on it. Perfect. We'll compare the two hair samples and know scientifically if it's the same rabbit. That's it. I found my wish to become the detective of the century. Or a scientist. Or both. That's it. Nobel Prize for investigations and inventions. Hi, Dewey. I've come to see how the investigation is going. Have you found any evidence that proves me innocent? You've come at the right time. I'm in the middle of preparation for the DNA analysis. You're going to get the results live. Here's Shy number one's hair, and there's Shy Super Turbo renamed Smooch's hair. I place him in my DNA extractor. But two! No worries, I've got them. I can't do anything with these massive sneezing attacks. Wait here a couple of seconds. Hmm. 
Mission over, Sally. The DNA analysis confirms that the rabbits have the same genetic profile. Basically, Smooch and Shy are one and the same rabbit. But that's impossible. All my tests have come to the opposite conclusion. In any case, it proves I haven't been lying. I'm running off to tell Martin. Uh, so, can you say that complicated DNA sentence again? The DNA analysis confirms that they have the same genetic profile. Did you notice that she's got exactly the same pencil? The one that comes from the pet shop? What if she bought a new rabbit from there? <sighs> Nonsense. You've got to accept the results, Sally. A DNA analysis doesn't lie. Evidence that relies on one piece of hair isn't enough for me. Let me guess, Miss Anti-Science. You ought to go and visit the pet shop. No way am I going to set foot in that nest of animal allergens. Achoo! <laughs> oh, come on. There's no risk with your equipment. Wow. She's got plenty of twin brothers here. Jai was spot for choice. <laughs> the surveillance cameras, you're right. They must have caught Jaya on tape. But how are we going to watch the tape of the cashier standing over there? Ah! Rabbits running everywhere! <laughs> come here, you wild bunch! Hey, burbles! I said come here! We must go to yesterday or the day before, just before Jaya returned the rabbit to Martin. Hey, you two, stop! What are you doing with my computer? Ah, mother! An alien! This is nonsense! Why would I have bought a rabbit at the pet shop? Because I think you kept the real shy here with you. Which is no surprise, seeing how much you love, like, two rabbits. But you've already searched and found nothing! All my rabbits are here! Soft toy rabbits! All right, so why don't you leave me alone? Two seconds, please. We'll just try one more thing. Shy, come get your carrot. Shy! Uh, it is real? Oh, no! My Shy! He's so cute and well-behaved! My mum hasn't even noticed that I had him. I thought Martin would fall for the other rabbit. Martin's a good owner who knows his rabbit well. You'll have to hand him back, don't you agree? What remains a mystery is the DNA analysis, because it turned out there were actually two different rabbits. Well, I, I muddled up the tests. <laughs> on this little fur ball, and I'm really sorry I've ruined our friendship. Bye-bye, Shy. Jaya, wait. If you like him so much, there might be a solution. If your mother agrees, you can stay at your place from time to time, and you can visit here whenever you want. Is that right? Oh, that's too cool! You really are my best friend. Okay, rabbit hut closed. I mean, case closed. What you? <laughs> I don't understand. I've still got this allergy, but there's not a rabbit inside. Achoo! Hey, yes! My bracelet is broken. My wish will come true. Quick, I must make a wish. Uh, I wish to get rid of my allergy. Hmm, it's working. Sally, my nose isn't blocked anymore. I can breathe. I feel great. So, these magic bracelets really work. And if I wear it, do you think it will make my own... Achoo! Achoo! Hey, but... Blooming bracelet. That's what made me sneeze. Sally, can someone be allergic to a bracelet? Achoo! No, silly, to a bracelet made of banana leaves. Second mystery solved. keeping their own sweets, we put them all together and share them out. If only it wasn't so exhausting moving these sweets around. Uh, come on, hurry up and hide them. We won't have time to get into costume. <laughs> oh, Mr Caretaker, is that you? Hands up, this is a stick-up. Don't move and no noise, or else we bite. Ah! Oh, no, this is awful. Oh. The noise has been stolen and the party starts in 30 minutes. Okay, boys, if you want to call me a genius, just go right ahead. I've created a wonderful party. This is 
know the difference between a fine shower and a downpour? It's okay. Is everything ready? Let's move it here. Energy, pace. We have a giga party in 28 minutes, you guys. Everything's okay, boss. The sweetometer is all set up. Last year we set the record for 93.12 centimeters. The suspense is unbearable. Will we beat it? Oh, my costume's too tight. Every time I move, it's a disaster. Do we give me a hand? <laughs> Everybody needs a Dewey handy. Ready? Ah! Somebody stole it! Uh, oh. Somebody stole the lollies! What? But that's not possible! The party's starting in 27 minutes and 29 seconds! 28, 27, 26, 25... No time to lose. We need a plan of attack. So to sum up, our bandits were three Draculas with pointy teeth and torches. So students in costume. Did you see anything suspicious before the theft? The lolly basket's huge. The thieves couldn't have offloaded it in only two minutes. So that means that the lollies are still in the school. Our priority is to stop the Draculas from getting away with the lollies. There are two exits that we have to block. This one here and this one. What about that one to the stadium? Did you forget that? Okay, Andy and Ahmed, you block the exit by the bike shed. Christopher, you take the stadium. The main exit isn't a problem. The caretaker's there. We just ask him to stop any passing Draculas. Well, we can't tell the caretaker that the lollies were stolen. The party will be cancelled. If this gets around, it'll be a disaster! Calm down, Christopher. We don't have time to panic. Any ideas what to do next? I'll look for clues at the scene of the crime. Maybe I'll pick up the trail to where the robbers hid the lollies. Perfect. I'll take care of the caretaker. We all know what we're doing? A Dracula hunt, you say? Yes, we disguised three kids as Draculas. They're hiding somewhere around the school. If you see them, call me right away so that I can catch them. By the way, just out of curiosity, I've always wondered, can you really see every room in the school on these screens? That would really help me track down my vampires. So this is where the stick-up took place. Nothing visible to the naked eye, but a lolly is made of sugar. That is glucose, and there seems to be plenty of it. This button gives you the kaleidoscope. You can see all the rooms one after another. Oh, I like this Dracula hunt idea. Can I play too? I love being it. OK, I don't have a costume, but I can be a zombie. When I was a kid, I was the best zombie in the whole school. There's something going on in the library. Sorry, King of the Zombies, but witches don't hang around. Something funny in the library. Meet me there. Wait, Sally, I'm on the trail. With my glue-detecting goggles, I'm able to see all the glucose molecules. Oh, no! I don't think I've got the trail anymore, Sally. I've got far too many. Of course, on Halloween, you might as well look for a needle in a haystack. Get moving. We've only got 20 minutes to find the lollies. Red-handed. Oh, yeah! Oh. We stand Dewey the genius! <laughs> we sent booby traps like that all around the school! Ha oh, ha ha! So funny! Aren't you fed up with this every year the same? If I told you that the lolly jackpot was stolen, would you be ready to help? No problem! You just pull on the bit where the red spider is! We only have 17 minutes! This witch's costume has already cost me too much time. I have to change. Another one of Jeremy and Alex's stupid jokes. Huh? Hey, I'm Dracula! Uh, stop! SPI! Say, a lolly. It must have come from the stolen hoard. Mm, it's cold. It looks good, but you can't eat the evidence. Dewey, we don't ever tell you, but you're the greatest. Weird. Why are there just a dozen lollies? Was the basket left here? <laughs> A trap! Sally! Somebody! Help! Ah, free at last. With dresses like that, I can see why witches get so nasty. Investigations are better in my sari. Hey, my sari! Jeremy, Alex, the joke isn't funny anymore. And this is the girls' bathroom, not the boys' room. Jeremy, Alex, I said enough. If you don't return my things, I'll... <laughs> huh? hmm. Dumb trick. Shut me in the dark and scatter my things. Oh, my phone. Where's my phone? Okay, what do I do now? Chase the vampires in my underwear? Hey, you! Stop right there! Come back! You lolly thief! You costume thief! You sorry thief! Hmm? A Dracula costume? <laughs> <laughs> This 
Dracula costume is much better than the witch's. Only 11 minutes left. I'm gonna make pumpkin pie of her. Huh? Dracula's chasing Sally. We have to help her. Try the pumpkin, now you're a lumpkin, you wicked witch. Mm. Got you, you rotten thief! You don't <laughs> scare us anymore. I'm not the thief, you pair of nitwits. Yeah. I'm Sally. The thief switched costumes. Uh. Call Christopher and tell him we're now looking for a witch. <laughs> I've lost any trail that could have led to the lollies. I've lost time and I've lost Dewey. Sally, I've discovered something that could lead us to the lolly hoard. Great. Where are you? Join me. I'm in the yard. Uh, no. You join me. I'm locked in a cupboard. We're going to be so spooky with our ghost costumes. It'll be so great. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Sally, I found these lollies, and they're very cold. That's a clue to finding the hiding place. Great. We have just nine minutes to find a cold place with no heating where nobody ever goes. It can't be outside. We'd have seen the basket, and the canteen cold room is locked. The, the rubbish, rubbish bin shed. Not a very appetizing place to hide lollies. This is a real vampire's trick. Nothing. 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 Look, a tire track. There was a rubbish bin there less than a minute ago. No time to play forensics. They picked up the lollies, and the party starts in six minutes. Quick. Hey, Sally, how's the vampire hunt going? What are you doing with that trash can? Uh, it's just some old decorations. Too dingy for the party. Oh, well, thanks for the help, monsters. The less I work, the better I feel. Sally, somebody stole our ghost costumes, and they left these lousy Dracula costumes instead. He exited the caretaker's lodge. He's looking for Draculas, but now the thieves are disguised as a witch and some ghosts. Maybe the robbers have already got away. <laughs> We've got just one chance. We don't have a nanosecond to lose. Follow me. We have to go through the refectory. Alex and Jeremy, you come too. Hurry! Ah! <laughs> oh, my confetti gun is now a spiderweb launcher. Not bad, huh? Well done, Spider Dewey. Jeremy and Alex, go and tell Christopher to stall the start of the party. Okay, let's hear it. Are you dealing in stolen sweets? Jaya, Nirmala, Lee? But you're all members of the Lollies for All Association. What got into you? The Halloween Lollies! There's loads for the school, but none for the kids in hospital. Those kids are sick and can't go trick-or-treating, so we organised a collection so the sick kids could enjoy Halloween too. And we didn't get a single lolly. Everybody's bewitched by the sweeter meter, and nobody gives a hoot about those with no lollies at all. That's a fantastic idea, but why didn't you ask? We'd have said yes right away. All the students are so into the school party that we thought you would have refused. Are you nuts? Of course we'd have helped you. You shouldn't have turned to robbery even if it was like Robin Hood. The party! Hurry, we have just 30 seconds. Sweeto meter reads one meter six centimeters. Yeah, it's a record! Can we have some quiet now, please? Nirmala, Jaya, and Lee from the Lollies for All Association have something to say. Halloween is a great party. We get into costume, we play jokes, we eat lollies, but in the hospital, there are kids who can't go trick or treating. Unfortunately, this year we couldn't collect enough lollies for them. There's loads for the school, but none for the kids in hospital. So are you all willing to share the lollies with them? Yeah, yeah lollies for all! Yeah! yeah. 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 The sweet me that goes for hospitals! The sweet me that goes for hospitals! It's true, it really is important to share things in life. Here, Dewey, have some of our lollies. Thanks! What flavour are they? 